Guys, okay, this is like really bad because I recently just like kind of somewhat lost a job, not fired or anything like that, but just like not really needed anymore. And I don't have money. Oh my God. And I just bought like 7,000 books. I have a problem guys. So as you see my shelf, it doesn't look very full. Like I have like a row up here and a row here and then two of the Easton Press edition books. And I also have one of those in my car. I should probably bring it in here. It doesn't look like I have many books, but all these books I definitely bought within 2022 and it's bad um, because I have a whole two like storage boxes full of books too, but I just didn't want those ones on my shelf. Like I put out the ones that I want on my shelf on my shelf, like the ones that like people know <laughs> or like things that I like. I don't know, like really like. I put those ones out on my shelf or ones that I really want to read. So it doesn't look like I have a lot of books, but I spend so much money on books, like it's actually really not helping. So I know I look like a complete bum because I just woke up, but I had like this bag full of books because I went to the bookstore yesterday with a friend and I literally just had to like show you guys every book I bought because I'm so excited to put it away on my shelf, organize it and all that stuff. I also like, I have my shelf alphabetical, but I'm wondering if I should do it like color coded because I feel like that looks like really cute, you know? Like when people have it like all nice and color coded, like a rainbow and stuff like that. I don't know. Um, today, I'm doing a book haul for y'all. Oh, good pun. Also, before I get into it, please try this drink from Starbucks. It's so freaking good. It's just an iced coffee with no classic with uh, vanilla sweet cream and a couple pumps white mocha. It's so delicious. All right, guys, now to get at it. Um, let me take this book off. I guess I'll start with this book. So I didn't buy this book yesterday, but I bought it. Um, a couple weeks ago when I went to this used bookstore by my house Which I'm gonna definitely go ask for a job there just because I love books and it looks like They don't really have a whole ton of people and I would totally go work there. I think it would be So good. I could just sit there and read behind the desk like who wouldn't anyways um, I got the book called room by Anna oh, Emma Donahue um, which I think you guys probably most people have heard of this book um, and if not, you've probably heard of the movie. I feel like it's kind of popular, but maybe not. It's kind of like a thriller type novel and I love thrillers so very much. I bought some thrillers um, because I was like really on a romance kick. If you guys recently watched my June reading wrap up, <clears throat> there was a lot of romance in there just because I love romance. Um, but I thought today in my book haul I would read you the back of the novels because maybe you guys could watch this and be like, mm, that one sounds good. Instead of me just being like, yeah, I got this book. Um, I want to read the back of the novel for you guys so you can like decide if you want to like go get it. Okay. To five-year-old Jack, room is the world. It's where he was born. It's where he and his ma eat and sleep and play and learn. At night, ma shuts him safely into the wardrobe where Jack is meant to be asleep when old Nick visits. Room is home to Jack, but to Ma, it's the prison where she's been held for seven years. Through her fierce love for her son, she has created a life for him in this 11 by 11 foot space. But Jack's curiosity is building alongside Ma's own desperation, and she knows that Room cannot contain either much longer. Room is a tale at once shocking, riveting, exhilarating, a story of an unconquerable love and harrowing circumstances, and of the diamond hard bond between a mother and a child. It looks so freaking good and the movie just looks amazing but i always try to read the book before i watch a movie just because i think it's the book's always better than the movie and then why would you like go watch a movie and then read the book because then the suspense is not as good i don't know that's just how i feel okay now to get to my massive bag i'm just gonna go straight down this is in no specific order but i bought all these uh yesterday <laughs> First one that I bought, I've been like waiting to read this forever and I don't know like why I never bought it, um, but I was so excited for it and just like for some reason just never got it. This is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Um, she wrote Malibu Rising, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, Forever Interrupted, I can't even remember. But um, I really like her book so far. I've, I've read like one, but then I've read like um, some, some parts of Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and I just really like her uh, writing style. So I was really excited for this one because a lot of people recommended it. So let me read the back. Daisy is a girl coming of age in LA in the late 60s, sneaking into clubs on the Sunset Strip, sleeping with rock stars and dreaming of singing at Whiskey Go and Go. 
Her voice is getting noticed, and she has the kind of heedless beauty that makes people do crazy things. Also, getting noticed is The Six, a band led by brooding Billy Dune. <laughs> I could be butchering all these names, by the way. On the eve of their first tour, his girlfriend Camilla finds out she's pregnant, and with the pressure of impending fatherhood and fame, Billy goes a little wild on the road. Daisy and Billy cross paths when a producer realizes that the key to supercharged success is to put the two together. What happens next will become the stuff of legend. Pretty cool. A lot of these books, I just want to make clear, I have gotten from recommendations from Haley Pham. I love her books. I love her. I love her videos where she talks about books, and so like I feel like I get most of the, these recommendations from her. Um, so I think she talked about this book. I can't even remember what she said about it, but I swear someone said it was like just like cute. And so this is a uh, funny you should ask by Alyssa Sue. Sue, that's all I can read. Sus Sussman, Alyssa Sussman, sorry. Um, I actually really don't know anything about this book, but it looks to me just kind of like a cute, fun time just by the cover. But let me read the back to you guys. Then, 20 something writer, Ch I'm gonna get all these names wrong. Chani, Chani Horowitz is stuck. While her former MFA classmates are nabbing high profile book deals, all she does is churn out puff pieces. Then she's hired to write a profile of movie star Gabe Parker, her number one celebrity crush, and the latest James Bond. All Chaney wants to do is keep her cool and nail the piece, but what comes next proves to be life-changing in ways she never saw coming, as the interview turns into a whirlwind weekend that has the tabloids buzzing, and Chaney gets closer to Gabe than she had planned. Now. Ten years later, after a brutal divorce and a healthy dose of therapy, Chaney's back in Los Angeles with the career of her dreams as a successful writer. Except that no matter what new essay collection or online editorial she's promoting, someone always asks about the profile. It always comes back to Gabe. So when his PR team requests that they reunite for a second interview, she wants to say no. She wants to pretend that she's forgotten about the time that they spent together. But the truth is that Chaney wants to know if those 72 hours were as memorable to Gabe as they were to her. And so, she says yes. I kind of like love to read books or like tropes where they're in like college and I know this is like a decade later um but it just like it makes me want to go to get my master's more and it's just kind of like cool to see like what happens. And I don't know it just sounds cute so I'm excited. This one I think was recommended by Haley Fam as well um another just like cute like cheesy it's The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. I can't read cursive and that's like a really bad thing but Ashley <laughs> um, and I think this is just like a cute like rom-com kind of romance and I got this one at Target just because um, it was sitting right there and I really freaking wanted it and it was like 30% off or something um, but okay let me read it <clears throat> Florence Day is the ghostwriter for one of the most prolific romance authors in the industry and she has a problem after a terrible breakup she no longer believes in love it's as good as dead when her new editor, a too handsome mountain of a man, won't give her an extension on her book deadline, Florence prepares to kiss her career goodbye. But then she gets a phone call that she never wanted to receive and she must return home for the first time in a decade to help her family bury her beloved father. For 10 years, she's run from the town that never understood her. And even though she misses the sound of a warm, the sounds of a warm Southern night and her eccentric loving family in their funeral parlor, she can't bring herself to say stay oh my gosh i can't even speak her father's gone yet everything feels the same and she hates it until she finds a ghost standing at the funeral parlor's front door just as broad and infuriatingly handsome as ever and he's just as confused about why he's there as she is romance is most certainly dead but so is her new editor and his unfinished business will have her second guessing everything she's ever known about love stories i think it just kind of like sounds cool like it's an interesting prompt to, or like a I don't know, interesting plot to have like a dead, like a little spooky, but also like fun, you know? And like, just like like hearted. look so like ugly right now. I'm sorry, I need to like way nicer myself. I know this guys, cause you guys have told me that before. It's just like, sorry that you have to look at me this whole time. I hope you guys are looking at the books. Speaking of books, this one, The Counselors. This was just kind of a random pick. Um, most of these books actually kind of were. This is by Jessica Goodman, I would like to say stickers covering it. I think it's Goodman. This just kind of like reminded me, the, tr the uh, plot kind of reminded me of The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager, which is this book. The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. Best book ever. Oh my gosh, I love it. Well, actually, I would say this is my favorite book, but um, All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven, but it's my favorite thriller. 
by far. It's so good. Um, but it reminded me of that trope and I loved that plot line and everything like that. And so I wanted to sink my teeth into this book too. So let me read it. Camp Alpine Lake is the only place where Goldie Easton feels safe. She's always had a special connection to the place, even before she was old enough to attend. The camp is the lifeline of Roxwood, the small town where she lives. Alpine Lake provides jobs, money, and prestige to the region. But few Roxwood locals get, get to reap the rewards of living so close to the glam summer camp with its five-figure tuition and rich kids who have been sent there for eight weeks by their powerful parents. Goldie's one of them. Even with her towny background, Goldie has never felt more at home than she does at camp. And now she's back as a counselor, desperate for summer to start and her best friends Ava and Imogene so sorry, I don't know how to say that, to arrive. Because Goldie has a terrible dark secret she's been keeping, and she's more in need of their comfort than ever. But Goldie's not the only person at camp who has been lying. When a teen turns up dead in the lake late one night, she knows that the death couldn't have been an accident. She also knows that Ava was at the lake that same night. What did Ava see and what does she know? Why hasn't she said anything to Goldie about the death? Worse, what did Ava do? Nice little like thriller, friendship kind of deal. You know, the camp setting, love the camp setting. It's just like fun. Oh my gosh, I still have so many left. I'm so sorry, this book's gonna be so, or this, oh my gosh, what's wrong with me? This video is gonna be so long. I need a sip of coffee. This book is like so freaking heavy and I just like don't know why. Um, so I think these pages are just like, I love these pages. Like they're just like so crisp. Anyways, this is 56 Days by Katherine Ryan Howard. Um, this was kind of a random pick. I kind of just read the back and I was like, huh, that actually looks pretty good. And it's cool because it's written like about COVID-19. And so I thought that was like interesting because like we're living in that time. And I was like, wow, this will maybe be like somewhat relatable. Not everything in this book's gonna be relatable. No one even knew they were together. Now one of them is dead. 56 days ago, Sierra and Oliver meet in a supermarket queue in Dublin and start dating the same week COVID-19 reaches Irish shores. 35 days ago. When the lockdown threatens to keep them apart, Oliver suggests that they move in together. Sierra sees a unique opportunity for a relationship to flourish without the scrutiny of family and friends. Oliver sees a chance to hide who and what he really is. Today, detectives arrive at Oliver's apartment to discover a decomposing body inside. Can they determine what really happened or has the lockdown created an opportunity for someone to commit the perfect crime? I think that sounds pretty dang interesting. I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited to read this. Okay, this is like really dark, a really dark book, but sometimes I just enjoy dark books and I don't know why, um, but there's like dark humor in this book. And one book that had dark humor was uh, The Final Girl Support Group and I really didn't enjoy that one a ton. So this one might be kind of weird, but like, I just like, it sounded interesting, but this is The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey you. Eugene, Eugenides, 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 I don't, Eugenides, I'm sorry, Jeffrey, this is a book by Jeffrey, it's considered a modern classic that was originally published in 1993, and now it's like reissued, in a quiet suburb of Detroit, the five Libsyn sisters, beautiful, eccentric, and obsessively watched by neighborhood boys, commit suicide one by one over the course of a single year, as the boys observe them from afar, transfixed, they piece together the mystery of the family's fatal melancholy in this hypnotic and unforgettable novel of adolescent love, disquiet, and death. Jeffrey evokes the emotions of youth with haunting sensitivity and dark humor and creates a coming-of-age story unlike any of our time. I think just like the sisterly aspect, like just like the, like the, they're obsessively watched by their neighborhood boys and they all just die and then they have to piece together the mystery. I think that just like sounds kind of Okay, this is like such a random buy, but like I just wanted it for some reason and I don't know if I'll ever like finish it. Um, but maybe like I'll just like read a little at a time throughout my life. <laughs> it's just really massive. Um, but this is War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. I don't like know why I bought it. It's just like I always wanted to read it, but I don't think I'm just gonna like sit down and read this. Like I think it's like something that I'm just gonna like kind of like go through throughout my life because it's huge. All right, next one my friend got for me and I don't really know much about what it's about, but <clears throat> it is As I Lay Dying by William Faulkner, who's a classic writer, just like Leo Tolstoy kind of. Um, I think it's like kind of like historical fiction literature. This is what I'm reading right now and I cannot wait to 
I mean, not that I don't love filming this video because I love freaking talking forever about books, but I just can't wait to like, when I'm done with this video, just go read it. I've heard so many good things about it. And this is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab, I think. Um, I heard that this is kind of like a modern day classic, like it's gonna go down in history as a classic book. And so I think that's pretty awesome, but I love the cover, just like, it's so pretty. It kind of reminds me of the Atlas Six with like the, I don't know, like the weird like constellation kind of thing, which now I know what the constellation means um, once you read it, but um, it sounds really freaking interesting. So let me read to you. Moment of desperation, a young woman named Adeline meets a dangerous stranger and makes a terrible mistake. As she realizes the limitations of her Faustin bargain, being able to live forever without being able to be remembered by anyone she sees, Addie chooses to flee to her small village as everything she once held dear is torn away. But there are still dreams to be had and a life to live, and she's determined to find excitement and satisfaction in the wide, beckoning world, even if she'll be doomed to live forever alone. Or not quite alone, as every year on her birthday, the alluring Luke comes to visit. I think it's Luke or Luce, I don't know checking in to see if she's ready to give up her soul. Their darkly thrilling game stretches through the ages, seeing Addie witness history and fight to regain herself as she crosses oceans and tries on various lives. It will be 300 years before she stumbles into a hidden bookstore and discovers someone who can remember her name and suddenly everything changes again. Okay, this next one was an impulse buy because I always wanted to read it, but it's just, it's massive and the font is so small. I don't like know how he, continued to write the story for so long but it's Stephen King's It. It's just like massive like it's like as big or longer than more in peace I have no idea but it's it's huge and so I think I think it's smaller than more in peace actually. I think it would be really interesting to like read how um he wrote the book because I've seen the movies and they're really good but like oh my gosh like this is probably like hours and days worth of reading. So it's like a really long movie. <laughs> I'll read to you the back, but I think most of you kind of know what this is about. To the children, the town was their whole world. To the adults, knowing better, Derry, Maine was just their hometown. Familiar, well-ordered, and a good place to live. It was the children who saw and felt what made Derry so horribly different. In the storm drains, in the sewers, it lurked, taking on the shape of every nightmare. Each deepest person's Oh, each person's deepest dread. Sometimes it reached up, seizing, tearing, killing. The adults, knowing better, knew nothing. Time passed and the children grew up and moved away. The horror of it was deep buried, wrapped in forgetfulness, until the grown-up children were called back once more to confront it as it stirred and coiled in the sullen depths of their memories, reaching up again to make their past nightmares a terrible present reality. This next one was like super hyped up by Haley, um, who loves the rom-com kind of stuff like me and so she it's she says it's her favorite rom-com and so i don't want to like hype myself up too much about it because people we meet on vacation is kind of probably really hard to beat for me and like beach read but um i'm really excited to read this and this is better than the movies by lynn painter she says like this is her favorite author so i'm very excited to read it liz Buxbaum has always known that west bennett was not boyfriend material you would think that her next door neighbor would be a prime candidate for her romantic comedy fantasies, but Wes has only proven himself to be a pain in the butt ever since they were little. Wes was the kid who put a frog in her Barbie dream house, the monster who hid a lawn gnome's severed head in her little homemade neighborhood book exchange. Flash forward 10 years from the great gnome decapitation. It's Liz's senior year, a time meant to be rife with milestones perfect for any big screen, and she needs Wes's help. See, Liz's forever crush, Michael, has just moved back into town and horribly, annoyingly, he's hitting it off with Wes. Meaning that if Liz wants Michael to finally notice her and hopefully be her prom date, she needs Wes. He's her in. But as Liz and Wes scheme to get, to get Liz her magical prom moment, she's shocked to discover that she actually likes being around Wes. And as they continue to grow closer, she must re-examine everything that she thought and knew about love and rethink her own perception of what happily ever after should really look like. We're nearing the end. I have two more books. This one was an impulse buy um, because it was, uh, I had to get the buy one, get one 50% off. And then there was like, I needed another one with a sticker. And I just kind of didn't know what to choose, but I love Stephen King. So I got uh, his book, Salem Lot, um, Salem's Lot which is soon to be a major motion picture. Wow. I really don't know what this is about, so this is gonna be my first time reading the back. <laughs> I just bought it because it was Stephen King and 
I was like, yeah, I like Stephen King. He's a really good horror writer. So I don't know what this is about. This will be my first time reading the book. Ben Mears has returned to Jerusalem's lot in hopes that exploring the history of Marston House and Old Mansion long the subject of rumor and speculation will help him cast out his personal devils and provide inspiration for his new book. But when two young boys venture into the woods and only one returns alive, Mears begins to realize that something sinister is at work. In fact, his hometown is under siege from the forces of darkness, and only he, with a small group of allies, can hope to contain the evil that is growing within the borders of the small New England town. Which just sounds pretty good. It sounds pretty good. I read his book, The Body, and I thought it was like gonna be like a creepy, and I was waiting the whole time for something, and then it just like ended, and I was like, what the freak? It was really good, but like it was just like, you know, you kind of expect the body to be like creepy. I was wrong. So I definitely need to like research this book a little bit more so I know what I'm doing, but it sounds like it would be kind of like a creepy, a creepy book. This is one that I've been wanting for a while. Um, I actually, this is the reason why I went to Barnes and Nobles. Well, this and better than the movies. Um, <clears throat> because I couldn't find this book anywhere. Like seriously, it was like nowhere to be found. Um, but this is also <laughs> recommended by Haley Fam. I literally think most of these books out here that weren't impulse buys were like recommended by Haley Fam, like Daisy Jones and the Six and uh, Addie, I think the Dead Romantics and Funny You Should Ask, and yeah. But this is uh, Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blau. Um, and this is some kind of like historical literary fiction book, but I think kind of like maybe coming of age a little bit. Um, but I love the cover. It's just like cute, like she's on the beach, you know, she's chilling. Um, so. I'm excited about it. In 1970s Baltimore, 14 year old Mary Jane loves cooking with her mother, singing in her church choir, and enjoying Broadway show tunes of the month albums. Quiet and complaint, compliant, <laughs> she's glad when she lands a summer job as a nanny for the daughter of a local doctor. A respectable job, Mary Jane's mother says in a respectable house. The house may look respectable on the outside, but inside it's a literal and figurative mess. Clutter on every surface, impeachment now more than ever, bumper stickers on the doors, take out for dinner. Even more troublesome were Mary Jane's were Mary Jane's mother to find out. The doctor is a psychiatrist who has taken in a famous rock star and his movie star wife for the summer so that he can I'm so sorry, I'm butchering this. That the rock star can get clean. Mary Jane introduces her new husband new household to crisply ironed clothes, milk that hasn't spoiled, and a family dinner schedule. In return, she has front row seat to a world of sex, drugs, rock music, and group therapy. Caught between the lifestyle she's always known and the future she's only just realized is possible, Mary Jane will arrive at September with a new idea about what she wants out of life and what kind of person that she's going to be. My camera just like didn't turn off, but it stopped recording because I probably think, thought I wasn't like, like they probably thought it was an accident that I was recording. I have like two minutes left on my camera, so I'm gonna hurry this up. But it's kind of like a good girl gets introduced to bad things. Probably, what does she want from life? She's figuring it out. Um, is her life well, the good life that she thought before? Anyways, I was really excited about this book. I think it sounds really good. Um, kind of. Yeah, coming of age, historical fiction. That is all my book haul that I have. I don't know how many books I got. I got 14 books, I think. So that was a whole bunch that I just threw out you guys, but I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hopefully there's some book recommendations you got out of this. Um, I will definitely be reviewing these when I finish them. So don't worry, that will be coming soon. Not that you guys were worried anyways, but um, I know I've been doing a lot of book content lately, so hopefully you guys are kind of on board with all this stuff. If not, sorry, I just really like it. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and read and shave. <laughs> I'm sure you guys want to know that. All right, guys, I love you so much, and I will see you in the next one, which will be soon. Bye.